Andy, uh, what's your reaction to that? Oh. I'm a loss for words, really, to be honest. Um, I feel let down. I agree with the players. At this moment in time, no, I'm responsible. So let's not say uh, you guys or anyone listening that Andy Simpson is looking for scapegoats. I'm responsible. It's my team. I pick the players. Well, I can tell you that there's something not quite right within the dressing room that I haven't got the grips with yet. I think I know where it's coming from. I think I know where it's coming from. Um, until that cancer is eradicated, strong word, but I'm going to go strong. Until that's eradicated, or poison, uh, I think it's going to drag us down. Not drag us out of the division, drag us down in terms of results and performances. I've had meetings with all the players this week after last week, uh, individual meetings. Um, just to ask about the commitment, what it meant to play for Telford, AFC Telford United, what all that meant. They all come back with you know, the right answers. Uh, you'll see things again. You know, as, a, as a manager and a coach, you, you prepare your side, you send them out. We do everything humanly possible that we can do. But I can't force someone to run in the heat of the battle. I can force them by not playing them the next day. But once they cross the wall, I can't force someone to run 10 yards. I can't force someone to, to, to make a block. I can't force someone to, to, to win a header. When you've instilled the basics and you've worked through stuff time and time and time and time again. You know, we treat this competition really seriously. We've had these guys watch twice. That's how much we've... Um, we, we gave them respect. And at 1 1, you know, we, we, we give a full chew to Scalloway, deflection, I think we've got a better view from me, but we're 1 down, it gives them a lift, you know, you can't have a lesser club. You, if you give them something to cling on to, they'll, they'll cling up in there. I've been there. I've been on both ends of the coin, both sides of the coin. But we get ourselves back in the game again with full Tudors, um, free kick. And at 1 1, I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe a road to storm, let's go and get the game won. But, but an area of the football club or an area of the football team that rears its ugly head again on the pitch and we're down to 10 minutes. Now people are probably at home, you guys included, say I'm... My players are told week after week after week to leave referees alone. My players are told week after week after week that if a decision goes against you, they're not going to change it, walk away. My top players are told week after week after week not to retaliate to tackles, and yet I get it almost week after week after week, and that's where players can absolutely shaft it. Well, Andy, I mean, we talked about Dan Preston, and he's come back really well, but at the time, Dan Preston sent off twice in the season. There were questions asked about his future. I mean, Steve Jones now, this is twice from an experienced man. What, what action do you think he's going to take? Straight after the Newport game, I knew what action I wanted to take with, uh, with Dan Preston. And you sit down and you settle down. Um, but my reaction in the cold light today is exactly the same after the Newport game. But you know, football, and when you get to this side of the fence, footballers are protected by an unbelievable one sided agreement where you almost can't do anything with them. Right from the top level, right the way through. So. <coughs> I need to sit down with Lee and see where we're going and I feel for Lee and I feel for the board and I feel for our fans and I feel for uh, people who have put money in their pocket today. Uh, I feel for myself but that's not, I'm not the most important thing at the minute. All I can say is if people worked as hard as I was working I wouldn't be doing this interview. So read into that what you want. I've just said to the group of people you know, be careful what you wish for. Be careful what you want. But um, management's a lonely place at the moment. And, uh, you know, I'm a scrapper, I'm a fighter. I think I've said to you before, I can scrap and fight as hard as I possibly can. I need people to do it with me. The comments you made at the start of this interview, Andy, about a problem in the dressing room, can you allude more on that? Fans will ask questions and will jump to conclusions. Can you? Can you set it out in stone? Uh, no, I don't want to set it out in stone. I think that's wrong. It'll be dealt with internally. But um, it's, it's something not quite right. It's something not quite right. And uh, so it needs to be it needs to be shifted. But like I've just said to you before, sometimes you can't do what you want to do because of employment laws and contracts and stuff like that. But, uh, I know we're part time, but I'm not, gonna, I'm not using it as an excuse anymore, Nick. I haven't used it as an excuse once. You know, we're uh, we're a really good football.
football club, I'm a proud football club, managed by a really, I think, a good manager and a proud manager. And I'm getting fed up of having to come and defend individuals or performances like that. Uh, Indiscipline. That keeps creeping in. Because ultimately people will look and say, you know, well, what does he do? Well, you can only do so much. Or act when your hands are tied a little bit, you can't act. But, uh, as I say, I sound a bit low at the minute, and I would have thought anyone listening would probably be disappointed if I wasn't.